Hey everybody, Day Trader Rockstar here, and this is the high probability watch list for the week of June 26th, the last week of June. We're in the uh, the uh, depths of uh, summertime, and the markets are kind of feeling that little dragged going into the last week here coming up. The um, going to be an interesting watch list today. I'm actually going to put this watch list out um, to everyone. Um, cause I'm going to be leaving, t t well, no, I don't have to discuss what I'm going to be doing this weekend or anything like that, but I want to give a broad outlook on a lot of things that are happening in the market and, um, and, and kind of just go over my 10 best setups here going into the summer because the summer t t tends to, uh, we start actually June going into July, August, September, we start a, a series of months that typically and historically have been negative for the markets. Just going to review our, our good friend Jeff Hirsch over at uh, Almanac Trader, who does a great, um, he has a great little website and Almanac discussing the statistics for trading throughout the year. And, you know, he tracks this good. So I definitely recommend following him. And, and, and either way, he's on Tumblr, which is a good site to look for him, Jeff Hirsch on Tumblr. Um, and again, just to kind of go into this a little bit more, you can see, um, I'm just going to point out a couple of things um, that are going here. June ends NASDAQ's best eight months with a seasonal peak in mid-July. So going into July, we tend to have a, a peak, and then uh, we tend to pull back here in uh, August, September, and in October. And then we start to move back up here in the holiday season. But you know, I'm not a big fan of this, you know, big fan of just following historical trends and stuff. But I do know that the summer months of being in the market for as long as I've been tend to be a drag sometimes. And, um, you know, we just have to take that in consideration. So we have some new things that we're going to be doing in the next couple of weeks to kind of counteract that. And this week's watch, this week's next week's watch list is going to be based on, you know, really good, good names. My t top 10 st stocks to look at. At this point, the HPS stocks have actually been doing quite well, and and that's because we've been having good patience and and some discipline on waiting for these stocks to set up. And we'll kind of review those to also. All right. Um, it says the backdrop is set for sideways action over the next over the week summer months, especially after mid July, the worst uh, into the worst two months of the year, August and September. This is lining up well for Nasdaq best eighth month MACD sell signal that it can occur any time after June 1st. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, that's just a little update on that. I mean, we are approaching July right now. In July, we tend to peak out. If we take a look at a couple of these charts. So what I want to do right now, and um, you actually you see a, a chart here on Bank of America, and you can see this beautiful wedge pattern that's playing out here. And I, I was looking at some of these quality names that are out there, especially the banking sector and just, you know, some of the other uh, sectors. And it got me thinking, I said, you know, instead of looking at individual stocks on this watch list, let's take a, a broader look at things. And that's going to give us a better feel of how the market's going to react because the market's going to go where most of the stocks go. Uh, or one of the, you know, right now we've, you've heard that the top or, you know, 10 stocks have been kind of taking credit for the market rally we've been seeing. You know, the tech leaders, the Teslas, the Apples, the NVIDIAs, um, those stocks have been really uh, performing well and are the reason why this market's holding up. Now, when they say, and these, these stocks are kind of extended, as we could see, um, just an example, there's two tiers of stocks. We have these new tech stocks, the AI, AI stocks and the SoFi and stocks that have got a lot of good bounces and they're coming back very, very hard and fast versus stocks like Apple, uh, NVIDIA, Google, which are not pulling back fast. And that's telling me something. That's telling me a lot. And let's just take a look at these for an example here. Here's, I want to look at the daily chart here. AI had a nice little run here. And look at the drop here. You know, this is usually a good, you know, that's a sign of, of <clears throat> you know, that, that frothiness coming out of the market. And these things pull back. Because there's no real reason for these things to go, except the market was kind of in a, a very bullish phase right here. Uh, but when that when they uh, stopped at buying, these are the first ones to come down versus a stock like Apple, 
which is a quality name, makes money, you know, where money wants to go. Look at this. This is still at the highs here. So Apple, there is no doubt in my mind that Apple is, is heading towards $200. You know, um, if it's not, you know, this month, it's next month. And if it's not next month, it's the month after. But the way this thing is acting right now in Apple has to be number one on everyone's list on pushing higher. I mean, they have the recent announcement of their new uh, Vision Pro goggles that are going to be released next year. It's still a long ways off. And out of that, you know, there could be some, I mean, Apple's just Apple. It is a great, great company, and it continues to lead the market. Now, if there is a correction in any of these stocks, I'm sure that's going to put some pressure on the overall markets. Um, but will there be some rotation? And the, the rotation is what we focused on in the last month. The, fo the focus was on rotation into quality names. Um, a lot of stocks that were pulling back to the trend lines, uh, we got we got beautiful bounces. They were textbook bounces. I mean, not even like uh, the pullbacks here off of these levels. We're, again, wherever we like to the, the, get these little circles is stocks that we liked. Now, again, you can see where this ended up going. But there's a lot of stocks like this we've gotten into, and I'll kind of go over those. Um, but again, don't want to be all over the place like I usually am. I want to focus on our top 10 stocks going forward. And some, you know, and of course our quality HPS setups. We'll review those. Some of them are still setting up. The SWKs of the world, you know, we've been trading this nice long base in Stanley Black and Decker. And these are, you know, this base type of movement that we're seeing in a lot of stocks. A lot of stocks are giving us this, this long drawn out base. And this is quite bullish. You know, it's just a matter of being, you know, part of the bigger move when it finally breaks out. You know, we were in this one down here off of the, on these pullbacks, and now they're up here, and this has a nice pullback to the 20. And these stocks are in a, in a base pattern and actually, you know, overextended and kind of pulling back, and we kind of had to bide our time and see if we want to, you know, start to look at this again here, or do we pull back a little further, you know, just a little bit further before getting back into these, the SWK, the Sherman Williams, the SHW, you know, a lot of these stocks we've gotten in off of these pullbacks, and now they're flagging. I, I pointed out this flag today, which I kind of like in the Sherman Williams. Again, if we zoom out, you can see there's these things have been lagging. They're way off the highs versus the other stocks that are at the highs. The NVDAs of the world are at the highs, and, you know, 420. Um, very strong stock. Very, very strong. Very strong. All right, um, <clears throat> so where do we even begin with this? Let's actually begin with the HPS watch list, the current HPS watch list that we have. Now, the HPS watch list goes out to members of Day Trading Radio. And because it's an open watch list this week, and I rarely do that, but I do like to put them out maybe a couple times a year, kind of showing you what we have um, and what we give to our members here at Day Trading Radio. Day Trading Radio, when you... Um, When you log in here, and we're gonna just we're just gonna go through the process here. And I'm gonna show you where to find the uh, HPS watch list here. This is uh, Day Trader Radio here, and uh, again broadcasting live every day, the live market since 2007. Been trading full time um, since uh, 1996. So go to the members area. That'll open up when you use the name password. I'll show you how to get that in a bit. Log in, and then you're going to have what we call a, oops, you're actually seeing me on this. I should actually uh, switch this over to the other, other uh, thing here. Let's move that over to the Rockbot <coughs> so it doesn't get confusing. This will change in a second. There we go. So this is our, this is our dashboard, and... Um, on the dashboard, there's a lot of different things. Our trade alerts. Oh, look at that pen. It's entered our trade entry zone today. Someone mentioned that today, too. I'm going to go over that one. Um, the rock bot, the tradeometer, the, uh, the, the alerts, the news alerts, the chat room, our trading rooms. And then up here, we have every all the important stuff, the playbook, the forums, the uh, 
where you get your trade alerts, the HPS video, which is this right now, and then the watch list, which are the stocks that I identify for you to trade with alerts. And these alerts are all attached to your account. And when this is the, this is, you know, this is what I started back in the day. This was the original 10 for a thousand watch list. And what we, what we have here are stocks that are quality names. And for those traders out there who really don't have time to be in front of the market 100%, we look for the what I call the high probability methodology setups and the high probability methodology works off of five indicators and the five indicators including the divergence setup is they have to qualify to get on this list and the qualify to qualify again is um, you know just to give you an example it has to you know you click on the stock you'll see the setup uh, the setup that here's the, like the setup on general dynamics and most of these setups you're going to see are lower trend line divergences. Uh, divergences are a, a technique we, we use to trade these, these setups. And um, again, it has to have a combination of things. We have the oversold stochastic, in this case of our longs. We have to have the lower trend line stochastic or divergence. Uh, um, the stochastic needs to be oversold at turning up what I call the Nike check mark. So we have the momentum shifting, we have the support levels, and we have, have a quality name. And when you have all those things together, we set a buy trigger. Those buy triggers get hit when the price gets real time. And we track all this on our internal uh, servers. And when these these triggers get hit, you get the alert that a, a, a HPS setup has hit its trigger and you should look at it, you know, and make a decision if you want to enter or not. And then if it continues to move up and hits profit zone, you'll get another alert saying profit zone. Or it moves down and hits its stop, you'll get a you'll get a alert saying, and this alert comes in on your text message, and email, any way you want to have it signed up, uh, you, any way that you uh, want it sent to you. It's all on your dashboard, and you just um, put in your put in your information there. All right, so we we'll go over current there. <laughs> right now we have JD which is a recent Chinese stock that came off of the uh, lows here. And we had a nice move up. And I still like it, but, you know, we're getting a little pullback. I do expect it to continue to move back up here. It hasn't hit its trigger yet. It actually, you can see where we put the alert above this high when the last week. And it actually kind of moved down. So it hasn't hit its trigger yet. When, you, when it hits its trigger, it's really going to confirm a breakout. And I do expect it to kind of get moving and get back up into our profit zone. But it has not gotten up there now this um, setup um, let's, let's go back to here it says it's watching so it says watching mean it hasn't triggered yet <clears throat> that has not triggered yet now PayPal on the other hand let's go to the PayPal chart here I'll actually go on on this one over here PayPal actually did trigger, got, almost got up to our target, pulled back, and has pulled back down to our trigger zone. So this is currently active right now. And again, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the high probability setup area, you'll see that as a green dot. That means that stock has hit its buy trigger, and it's a long, and it's currently active. Our target is 7074. <clears throat> and again, if you look at the uh, the charts on those, you'll see. Uh, where that is and again that, that goes out on the video that goes out every Friday for the following week So these are very quality names and again the initial initial entry on PayPal This is our second entry the initial entry was a, a, a beautiful divergence down here on PayPal And the divergence was that low and that lower low and the higher low here And then we looked for a, a continued move up here and we did get that continued move up almost got to our target there and it's pulled back a little. I still think that target, which is a gap close, is going to be taken out. All right, let's go to uh, the next one. Now, Disney is an interesting one. <clears throat> Disney came up and hit our target. All right, hit our target a couple weeks ago. These are just, you know, these are all the recent HPS setups. <clears throat> it's pulled back again. And yesterday we got back in it. So 
this will end up being on the list again for this week just on the short-term list you know Disney does look pretty good right now a lot of people have thoughts you know comments about Disney and their political views and stuff <clears throat> I'm just looking at a technical view uh, and uh, that's how I like to trade now the target on Disney was a kind of a gap area and we did hit that now again like I said pull back we're back in and we're gonna fix that up for you let's continue on with just the current state of uh, affairs here <clears throat> general dynamic again we just were talking about this as an example before and how it qualifies for the list and um, when we whenever we see a lower trend line like this this is very important the lower trend line as you can see it just took off and right into our profit zone now it's kind of pulled back the trade is already completed and when a trade is completed and hit its target what does it do it leaves a little again green uh, yellow, a little gold dot meaning profit taken all right Harley Davidson how many people would put Harley Davidson on our list not many but again Harley Davidson fell into the criteria of an HPS setup and had a recognizable underlying channel line a nice pullback oversold here and I actually had my tar my entry level below us lots of times I'll put out the alerts saying watch for this level and we have a couple of for those this week watch for the level type of things meaning expect it to go lower but once it hits our area you're gonna have two kinds of buy signals you're either gonna have a buy trigger or a buy zone buy trigger is usually on strength a buy zone is something that you come down into <clears throat> and as you can see this was textbook we came right down into it triggered it and went right up to our profit zone perfect now it's in a little pullback and again, you, I always refer back to these charts because the trend lines are so accurate that I put in that if we end up coming back to this trend line, I'd be all over that. And let's talk about trend lines for a second. The important part about lower trend lines is it's, 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 it's a great style of trading combined with divergences. So if you have a divergence in a lower trend line um, or a just an oversold level in a lower trend line, you know, two different setups, that is a you know it's a what we call a, a high probability setup because it has a combination of things that we look for um, for example today the market opened up and uh, we were kind of selling off or pre-market if you remember trading today with us we knew that the market started off it was down about 35 35 points pre-market and we did a little calculation on the S&P, which doesn't open up until 9.30, but we wanted to see where we could actually kind of predict because the futures were down. And I was looking at the, um, let's see if I could set this up for you before I even show you. Hold on a second. Now this is where we left off yesterday and uh, we're right up against this trend line. As you can see, there's a little trend, you know, a nice one, two, three, one, two, um, there's a trend line up here if I zoom out you could see it we actually came down here on June 22nd gap down and bounced off this level really confirming the lower trend line so I extended that trend line out um, and looking at the um, where this was at the time 4380 <clears throat> my throat's a little scratchy and the futures were down about 35 points pre-market. We were looking for a move down to about 43.50. And you can see 43.60, 43.50 came down here. So I extended that trend line out to that level. And as you can see, I extended it out. We squared it off and we said, let's watch this trend line. We're probably going to open up down to it. And trend lines like this, if we zoom out, you can see the, the react, you know, it held up back here. It held up here. It held up here. This is something we wanted to trade off of. So we actually caught that trade. It was a, one of the best trades of the day. We, it was also quad rotation, uh, which is a, a super signal for us, for futures traders. And if you're a futures traders, futures trader, you want to stay tuned to next week because we have something very special coming for those future traders out there. I have a whole new section coming up, and it's I'm very excited about it. Super excited about it. Um, I'll drop a hint maybe at the end of this video and this is what happened so the market here now has come down and we took our profit we went up and then we waited for the market to come down and I said 
these type of trend lines like back over here you know right over here you could see um, let me see if I could get this so you can look at these arrows here right here we touched it and lots of times we'll bounce and we'll come back down now I've been in the market a lot to see how these things act if we have a lower trend line that's going down and this is established because I could zoom all the way out and it starts out all the way back here it tagged it here it tagged it here it tagged it here when we get a bounce we tend to sometimes get a bounce and then come back and make a lower low take out the stops but then bounce pretty aggressively and that's exactly what happened so at this point I said we're gonna watch for a pullback to that trend line again so now we're watching for that trend line pullback and here we come Market's coming down and just about to the penny, to the tick, to the dime, to the quarter, to the to the <laughs> to the trend line. We cut we get a nice move down there. And that was another nice setup. A trend line oversold stochastic level. And that's uh was key there. And the market just took off. We pushed up into the thing and we actually I you know, we bought calls at this point. We bought calls and we were trading the futures also. And again, we're doing everything. We're trading stocks and and futures and, and options um, so we're trying to you know, benefit from these levels and this is important to remember any type of high probability zone I want to point these out because this is where you're gonna make your money all right so at that point we had a nice little run to about one o'clock and we ended up taking profits I ended up saying you know what we had a probably uh, I think I took it off on, on this pop here or it might have been right over here I took it off and we got out and um, and that was that was fine that was that's all I you know and I think it was probably uh, honestly not to pat myself I think we got out right at the top <laughs> I honestly do I just um, we got out somewhere up up here and we just kind of settled in and the market came back and I was very surprised to see how far it came back down but look where it came back down to almost right back down to that trend line again and we bounced a little at the end of the day and came back so fantastic trade off the trend line sold our profits got oversold bounced didn't really do much other than that but the concept is there for all time frames on your one minute five minute daily time frame so when we talk about seeing this setup and then we look at um, you know some of the HPS setups most of these HPS setups are gonna have the same setup you're gonna have that lower trend line area here you have the lower trend line and you got that bounce right I mean look at this look, I mean that's it's just what you want to have delivered to you right do you want that type of setup delivered to you yes you do that's what the high probability setups are and that's my 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 pride and joy of trying to do that research getting you good quality names nothing really you won't really find penny stocks on this you won't find penny stocks on the HPS it's not that we don't touch them uh, during the day for scalps and pre-market movers and stuff and news and stuff but the HPS at first you know this is uh, very important stuff I think this is great for swing traders and traders who just want to not miss opportunities in the market so these are all set up um, go back to the HPS watch list and you see most of these have hit our targets now pen hit its entry zone today I'm curious to look at this because I haven't looked at it since I, it, the, uh, the entry zone came in if you look at the dashboard the HPS setups my trades go in red into the dashboard here and the HPS setups go into our green so if you get a green setup happening about three o'clock I take a look at that I was very straight uh, very interested in that and uh, someone mentioned in the room too so that was one of the last things that I've seen at three o'clock we got a, an alert that our pen gaming has entered our HPS zone so this is what I want to really look at here <clears throat> now this is an interesting one that we put out there because there was two directions I wanted on it I said at the time we sent this out I said it I I would start a position here where right where this candle is and look for a move up all right take profits in that zone but if you end up moving down to this level then buy it and then look for a move back up so what happened we got to move right up and now today I think it hit its I, I think let's take a look at it look at that 
So initially we go right up into our profit zone and then we come right down into our buy zone. And that's why we got triggered on that today. So this is an active one, just entering our buy zone, active. And I'm glad that worked out and uh, people got the alerts today at three o'clock as that entered the area. Um, <clears throat> take a look at uh, DXC a couple other ones here again here we have the lower trend line and then a, cha a wedge pattern inside that um, this is kind of a buy zone we're looking for, for it to come into that zone and then our profit area is up there and that just took off and actually look where it went up to it went right up to the trend line and tagged and pulled back so you could even look at these charts and say, well, that's a good short up here. Even though I didn't put it as a short setup, it was a long setup out of this falling wedge pattern into this zone here. We did hit that zone right at the next day, and it just took off. It didn't even stick around too long. Um, and again, the key here is patience. The key here is patience, waiting for these setups to set up. Not every week are we going to have a... HPS setup. Sometimes the market is going to be super extended. You're not going to have the lower trend, trend line balance. You might not have a divergence. This was a divergence right here. This was a divergence wedge pattern HPS setup all the way. So we very bullish on that to, to move up. In some cases, you know, you're not going to get that every day. So some weeks you're going to have a lot of setups. Some weeks you might not have any setups because I'm not going to just push out a random setup just to fill in the blanks and, and you know we will talk a lot of you always get a watch list that's for sure you know since 2007 you always get that watch list but it'll be education it might be something new um, but the HPS's are very important to understand that they have to you have to you know have that set up all right let's move on here and for those, a good time to kind of segue into this. I hate to do it, but I had to drop a little ad in here for Day Trading Radio. If you're interested in getting those alerts and you're not a member, um, the HPS watch list, that, that special watch list comes standard with all, the, all our uh, membership packages. The beginner starter package is a great way to start here. It's three months for 129 It's very affordable. You get everything. You get the, you get the, um, the dashboard. If you click on that, you should get a... A nice little page here includes the high probability setup, weekly watch list, what I'm going over now, the tradeometer, scalping indicator, which is, uh, I have to show you that. That's on there. I mean, there's plenty of videos, and you, you know, that's a uh, scalping indicator. You have the Rockbot channel, which is going to identify the quad rotations and everything. Um, the School of Stock Beginner Trading Courses. I got a five part, a five part series course. Trader da dashboard, all the alerts, and our tra chat rooms and trading rooms, and of course, um, the forums, which have all the different, you know, a lot of education on that. Chat rooms, which are busy every day. Here's the tradeometer, uh, which identifies our multiple entry and multiple time frame entries on scalping. It gives you all the directions how to use that. Our dashboard and everything to use that. You have the tick strike player. You got so much here, so much. Rockbot channel, which you watch the bot take its trades uh, based off the HPS methodology, the high probability setups, how to set up your alerts. You get alerts on the trade alerts, the HPS alerts. You get a quad rotation alerts and everything else that goes along with that. So that's just one option. That's the beginner option. We have a sale um, actually on the yearly membership right now. There's a yearly membership. There's a sale that comes with the courses. Now the courses is intense. You know, this is again. I've been trading since 2000, 1996. Been doing the show since 2007, and um, over the time, I've written a couple books and manuals on trading, and I've converted those manuals into two big courses: the HPS Foundation course and the Ultimate Divergence course. Uh, typically, uh, those are sold separately, uh, or they're included in the uh, lifetime membership for free it's a five hundred dollar value um I'm, for the first time ever we're adding them to the yearly membership so you get these two intensive courses that has everything in it everything that you need uh to start your trading 
here with Day Training Radio. These courses are intense courses, video courses, um, hours and hours and hours of uh, lessons. You know, here we talk about the divergence and what the divergence, the quadro, the um, the ultimate divergence course is my my pride and joy. Um, just just a lot there. So typically, again, you get those separately if you purchase those separately. They're now added to the yearly. Um, so you're getting them basically for free, five hundred dollar value. You're getting it for free with one year of of um, day training radio serv of service with everything included. So that is an incredible deal. Typically, the yearly is actually five ninety nine. I actually took hundred dollars off because it's a three day three day sale for until Monday. Uh, on that, that'll be back up to five ninety nine because that is very cheap for that. That's a whole year, you know, considering uh, you know considering what you get here. Um, <clears throat> the three month again, you see three months one twenty nine. You get the whole year, or you could just uh, go for the lifetime. In the lifetime, you get the bot code to run so it automatically takes your trades you get all everything here um, and that's on sale too here typically it's uh, again lifetime access to everything including everything that comes the added added courses added features there's a lot of other features I need to discuss um, typically we have some sales on it we have a, a sale on it but this is the, mo the best sale you're ever gonna get 50% off coupon and again, if you do the math, you'll see how, you know, where the yearly is $500, the lifetime is $1,000. So, I mean, that's an incredible value right there. Typically, it's $2,100, $2,200 to be exact. So, if you click on that, click on that, click on it, Johnny. I got to fix the click on I got to fix the clicker on that. on a second that's the weekly here hold on I fix that I just had the um, site I was working on the site applying the coupon and I forgot to close it so I couldn't click on it but anyway now if you close that here um, it'll pop up here you see the lifetime subscription here rockbot plus the uh, rockbot code includes school of stock 20 uh, if you click on that and then put in uh, what's, what's, the, what's the code here one a a a and then uh fill in everything it'll take 50 percent off the price but i have to fill in i'm not going to go through that but just when you fill it all out and then go to next it'll it'll show you the correct price it'll take a 50 percent off of that. that's a great deal right there everything else is set uh as is but for the lifetime here take advantage of that code and uh yeah, just take advantage of that. So let's get back to the watch list here. Again, 1AAA is the code. Again, or you could go to the uh, lifetime, or um, the, the um, yearly, which also has a school of stock. And that's a great deal too. Or you want to start things off here with the three-month special. You don't get the courses with the three-month special. You get a little beginner, five-part beginner course to get you started and stuff. But the real value comes in here. The starter program, one year and the lifetime here where you get all the codes and the automated trading and I am working on the trade trading view code also tomorrow I'm actually gonna be working on that because it looks like my trip is gonna be rained out I'm supposed to go on a little trip down Long Island but it's gonna be raining so anyway let's get back to the watch list and I appreciate you let me do that a little promotion there of day trading radio because we are a membership supported group here we have hundreds of traders here trading every day and I appreciate every one of you guys. All right. Um, the um, it's a lot of information here. This is a lot of our members. We meet every year um, for members get together, but we didn't during the COVID, COVID years and kind of slacked off because of that. I do a lot of presentations at the trader uh, expos and stuff, teaching uh, trading. And uh, anyway, all right. Um, Gonna get rid of that. So here we go. Uh, top ten stocks going into the next summer months. The next two months, we're gonna call it. I want to continue to do the watch list and give you the HBS watch list for each week. But this is a special one because there are some good quality names, 
and then the market's in a kind of a little pullback phase. Remember, we're also watching the stochastic rotation here. The rotation has been pulling back here. And um, with that pullback, you know, I, I stress the importance of understanding one basic concept in the market. You know, being on the right side of the, the right side of the trade. You know, being on the right team it means a lot. Who's you want to be on the winning team, right? Stronger team. You know, if you're going to pick, <laughs> and what's my analogy going to be this time? Well, I'm always looking for an analogy. So let's call it the the the, the kickball analogy. You know, you want to get picked by the team that has all the best players in it. I don't know how that fit, fits with the uh, trading though. But you remember as a kid, you used to be, hopefully you get picked early. And then you felt bad if you were the last one picked. Oh, it was just embarrassing. But you don't do that anymore because everyone gets a trophy. And don't get me started. Um, the simple, simple concept here. You know, I trade using the stochastic oscillator. A lot of people trade the MACD, RSI. You can trade whatever you want. You'll, you learn my method, you're going to come back to it. You'll find, you'll you have to try to find your own way, as most traders do. But you'll come back because you'll realize how, how good this is. And simple tools, you don't even have to, pay to one simple thing is the momentum and, and, and uh, the flow here of the trade. If you're getting, if, you, if, the, if the stochastics are moving up, and I'm not going to go into a stochastic uh, course right now or even a lesson, you know, that's all part of the school of stock and other parts of the site. But if you wanted to kind of just talk about the stochastics, how they measure, and what stochastic, stochastics are doing is measuring a change in momentum. And, you know, when the stochastics go between zero and 100, that's taking how the closing price of each candle is closing ver uh, on a scale of zero to a hundred. Um, and it, you know, and again, unless I have a piece of paper and it's kind of showing you some examples and breaking it down, it might be a little confusing. But the you know, slowly, slowly, even though the price is going down, um, we start to get oversold and then we start to see the prices start to close higher on the candles so this is going to start going because the average of the candles closing is starting to turn and you got the momentum starting to shift now the divergence setup is the key you know indicator that we look for because that predicts a price movement before the price movement lots of times just an overbought and oversold level could you know that's not what we're tying the training but it does help you know if you just look at it and say Hey, why would I go long when the momentum is going down? Or why would I go short when the momentum is going up? Why would I fight that market? So in this, in this scenario, we are kind of turning over and we have to be concerned about that and not be too aggressive trying. You don't want to just waste your money going after bad things. So discipline and patience become the key components of being successful in trading. Just like playing poker, you wait for a good hand. Uh, before you start betting you could fold as much as you can you don't have no bl blinds here in this thing you know you don't you don't have to trade you trade when the time is right and that's what i'm going to let you know when the time is right so let's remember that so what i've been doing is and i'm not saying that this market's not going to go higher i know we're in a kind of a, a, a an area right now of um of kind of a, a weird a weird situation where we are starting to kind of roll over uh, markets don't have any catalyst here we're entering a, a negative part of the year um, the green index is up there really high the volatility has been sucked out of the market a lot of people are looking for a spike in the volatility which would probably mean that the market kind of gets the volatility to the downside um, but I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna play that game. I'm not gonna predict that game. I wanna, you know, we trade short term, we trade long term. But I'm, I, I think that this market, if we look at the bigger picture here, you know, we're extended up here and we're starting to turn over on the, uh, on the daily. We're kind of coming down. We're coming down pretty fast. We haven't gotten down here, uh, oversold in a while. We have a couple trend lines, uh, underneath us. We have the 20 period moving average, we're kind of flagging out. We want to see this come down a little bit more. Um, 
and I'm not against this market trying to rally and move back up. So I'm watching this slight little red line here. This red line goes out to closing lows in October, comes back up in January. We chopped around it, tested it, chopped around it, tested it, tested it, tested it. So it's because of a major level. I'm going to move this arrow down here. Um, and that, that red trend line here, which brings us down to about... Uh, we'll call it uh, 43.26 or 25. All right. About about 20 more points to the downside to get to that get to that one level, and it's also where the 20-period moving average is. It'd be an interesting uh, level there to see if we start to hold that. All right. Now, the one thing I want to go over here, and what I wanted to do today also was kind of measure out where do we see the market you know where are we going to see that strength coming in are we going to continue to see the strength in the stocks like nvidia um and uh, google and apple and the stocks that have been holding up pretty good Th that could happen it could happen but one good way of looking and doing i usually do a scan of about 500 stocks every friday and kind of go over them but what i want to do today we're going to take a scan of the etfs so i want to break down the etfs for you and the etfs are the exchange traded funds with a basket of stocks in that sector. So we're going to get an overview of of what sectors are going to be looking good. And if these sectors look good, that's where we want to concentrate on. So let's just go down a few of these. So we're going to start off with the energy sector, the E L, the X L E. Oh, that's spelled that one wrong, John. Let's get on to let's get on here. X L E. X X Johnny X. XLE. Sometimes I say something, my mind does something totally different. All right, so what do we have here on the XLE? We definitely have, um, and I'm not a big energy trader. I don't trade gas and oil, you know that. I, I just feel there's too many cross cr cross uh, signals on these. But I, I like charting everything. I am a charter, um, and we'll look at this as kind of a, a ch channel. We have a little support line. We're oversold, you know. Here we have it. We're oversold. We're just starting to get oversold here. So that's something to uh, consider. All right. So oversold on the energy sector. And we are on a little support line right now. All right. I'd say we can't break down and stay oversold. There's no big setup here. I'm looking for divergences or I'm looking for a combination of an HPS setup. If I see a divergence on this, I'll point it out just for education purposes. There was a slight divergence here, right here. There's a slight divergence between this low and this low. All right, um, and then we got a nice little move off of that, and then it kind of got overbought. And like I said, when you get overbought here, we you just got to pack up and go. You can't be smoking the hopium. Next up. XLF ends with an F. It must be financials. Yes, it is. And of course it is. I knew that. Um, oversold. I like that. Um, nothing really standing out here. It's not the oversold on the 14.3. I have 9.3 and the 14.3 here. Is, uh, we kind of gap down. We're moving down a little. It, uh, you know, nothing really standing out here. There's a little gap here. You know, nothing, nothing too uh, serious on that. Can't, can't give you any real good um, decision on that one. Let's take a look at the utility sector, XLU. XLU. Uh, and again, this is a daily. We're also going to take a look at the weekly in some cases. The weekly in some cases are good for those real long swing traders saying, all right, I have some money I want to put to work. Johnny, where do I put that? Well, I would first thing I would do is look at the weekly charts for you because I want to have the biggest move possible. If we look back here at the weekly charts, I'm just going to put a straight line. I'm just going to show you. A, um, where's that line of mine? Should have a cursor across there. There we go. If we have a line here on the weekly, and you see that weekly starting to turn back up. Look at the week. Look at the move up. You know, multiple weeks, multiple months over here. Same thing big move up oversold here same thing big move up oversold down here oversold 
big move up. You don't have to worry about things too much. You could say, all right, I want to take a position because we're oversold on the weekly. Bound here, oversold. Three or four week, a whole month rally here. A move up. Not a lot. Here we're kind of midpoint. We kind of didn't get all oversold. We kind of not, you know, just, I just don't like it. Just, I feel like, all right, let's find something we love. Gold miners. Let's take a look at the gold. GDX. GDX. Um, same thing. Kind of pointing down. This is not, this is kind of interesting. Um, and if you guys want me, I could do a chart on Bitcoin in the uh, this weekend too. If you give me some feedback, give me some positive feedback in the comments. And I will uh, do a Bitcoin chart for you guys. You can see here we have a nice little gold miner ETF. It's pulled back. Not quite oversold yet. This one's kind of stay, sticking down here. We're almost breaking down out of this rising channel. Just doesn't look right. Nothing, uh, nothing, you know, I'll know it when it's right. We'll see a clear divergence. We'll have a reversal candle. Here we had a slight divergence. See the higher lows and the lower lows right here. And this was your good area down here. You see these little pins here? This is our divergence indicator. I have it, I have it scripted onto my charts here. All right, let's take a look at the technology uh, ETF, the XLK. Now, technology has been leading this market, so I'm sure we're going to see a better, a different chart here. Look at that. So technology at this point here, overextended, really high up here, near the highs, all-time highs. Um, I believe in strength. I believe in the mega corporations, and they're going to continue to get bigger. I believe this market is rigged to go higher. You will have its short-term pullbacks, but just like what happened to Rivian's getting kicked out of the uh, the Nasdaq, they're going to put in something that works. If you're not performing, or not making, you know, you're not growing, they're going to boot you out of the index. And how? Do, what's what's what makes the market go up? What? How does the market? How do you uh, measure the market? It's be, by the stocks that are in the index and those stocks are weighted and you know these weighted stocks that's why this is you know the heaviest weighted stocks the Tesla's the Microsoft's the Apple's and stuff uh, those stocks have a heavy weighting and are doing good of course this is going to go higher and over time it's going to go higher this, Apple's not going to pull back Apple's <laughs> Apple's definitely my number one pick on the uh, uh, you know going higher. I mean sometimes people could say well Let's just buy Apple, you know some of the top ten here and just call the day You know you could do that if you wanted to Healthcare let's take a look at healthcare. now we start to get a little interesting thing here XLV uh, XL um, yeah XLV Now healthcare is kind of interesting it got a nice turn up we have a little momentum to the upside It didn't really sell off here with the market we're hanging out underneath the uh, the highs. It looks pretty good, the healthcare ETF. You know, you can see we're kind of turned back up. The momentum, again, being on the right side of the momentum is very important. This is a weekly chart on this. This is on a weekly. Let's take a look at the daily. Daily is probably going to give us a totally different thing. Well, no, the daily is actually looking okay, too. Daily is kind of in, trying to hang up here in the upper part of the band. Um... It looks pretty good. I mean, again, you look at it overall for the last two years, it's been really going sideways. You know, unless you're able to buy, um, you know, when it's oversold on a daily and get a nice move and then sell, wait for it gets oversold again. You know, that's where you're going to make your money. But if you're holding from, you know, 2021 back here, you know, you're still underwater uh, if you bought it at 134. You know, imagine how frustrating that is have that in your IRA you know just just sideways chop unless someone's actively trading this and that's what we want to do actively trade these right now it's not in the position to say that we're gonna go higher it's kind of extended but this type of strength uh, my experience tells me this is acting pretty good and it doesn't look that bad uh, discretionary consumer discretionary sector XLY XLY Very strong. Well, let's go back here. January to today did break out recently here, and it's been holding up, and it's actually flagging out. And this is on the daily, flagging out on the daily. Usually, consumer defensive stocks. 
um, could help. You can see it's not it's it's off the highs. It had a nice little run. Are we starting to roll over here? It has a feel look and feel of a nice flag going with it. So kind of has a nice feel for that. It's not really the market, even though the market's been selling off here, this seems to have been holding up. So we're talking about possible rotations and where the rotation could lead. And uh, you know, I think some of these stock, some of these sectors we're going to go. Basically, let's take a look at consumer staples now. X L P. XLP, consumer staples, ETF. Not bad. Um, off to 200. Indecisive. Indecisive. Let's take a look at materials. XLB. Oh. Again, the, uh, not much here. The momentum to, to the downside. But they're holding, you know, just have a little gap down, four days to pull back, not oversold yet, love to get things oversold, love to have the upside momentum to be on the ups, you know, to be long is to be, uh, you know, with a strong trend. <clears throat> I'm not seeing that yet. Um, real estate, IYR. Again, this is one of the reasons I am, I'm doing this type of watch list because we're in a, a, a kind of a, uh, a sloppy area of the market right now real estate here pulling back I mean is there shorts available here could be could be shorts uh, real estate doesn't look that bad look uh, that good I should say it looks quite bad the uh, there is a, a big trend line here that and uh, for those out there um, when you draw a trend line you take what is uh, what it's showing you you know, it's an obvious level. Lots of times if you see a trend line, you don't want to go and put your trend line from, from you know, from this high to this high and then go out into nowhere. If it shows that this level and this matches up, there's more multiple levels that pop up and this is kind of a, an outlier that pops, it, that's exactly what it is. It's an outlier or, a, you know, some kind of news came out and it, if it comes right back and then retests the area, that is conf confirmation that this is a true trend line and this is confirms itself. So that's very important, very, very important on, on when you do your trend lines. Do not take the tips or the extensions of the lines. Take the closing prices and also wait for the third to come in for a confirmation because lots of times these could be outliers or something. And when you look back and say, well, all right, now, now you can see that one, two, three. If this comes back to that level and then it's confirmed again, you're definitely taking five. So I call this the one, two, three pattern where there's three pivots. You're taking four and five. I don't care how you're looking at it. You want to trade four and five. Uh, now, again, we came up to five here, banged up against it, and it started to pull back. Does not look anything like I want to be part of yet. Home builders, XHB, XHB. Well, no. Looks okay. We're kind of breaking out here on the daily. Actually, we are breaking out. I mean, the home builders look good. So, the home builders look okay. We'll take a look at a couple of home building stocks like the Lenore, LL8, LL, and again, you can see most of these stocks are actually looking the same as the ETF. Um, oh, my mind is drawing a blank. Um, KB, KB Homes. There it is. All highs of the day. All highs of the, um, just highs. Going higher. They're going higher. Wow, look at that strength in these home builders. I mean, these have been really, really under the radar. Um, you know, we haven't, I haven't focused on any of the home builders this year at all. I mean, it, it, it seems like boring. Let's take a look at Home Depot for a second. 
Home Depot hasn't gotten any uh, love from the home builders, that's for sure. But Home Depot is actually uh, not a bad trade right here. You can see the consolidation here. The market's selling off. This home, and this is not really selling off too hard on the 14.3. The consolidation here is is pretty fierce. Um, yeah, that gap up here, and this is what we're looking at. We're looking at this tighter consolidation. We came up to this. This is a gap area. We touched it here. We touched it here. Um, you can see that. That's, you know, we get back down to the lower trend line here, a lower channel area. Might be interesting, but I think this actually holds. Home Depot, is, uh, it looks pretty good. Let's take a look at the weekly. Weekly has that little bullish momentum to it. It's holding the 200 period moving average. It looks okay. Um, but again, you know, you have a choice to make. You could wait for the oversold levels. Maybe a divergence. This is a textbook divergence. You have the higher low, the lower high, and that was the low. Now you got, you're up here and you're kind of pushing down. Maybe it starts to turn back up. I have a feeling it probably will turn back up. You know, it's not a bad stock to... Uh, to have uh, have at this point you know we're talking about stocks that we want to hold on to you know start positions now and maybe hold for a couple months this is not that bad um i would put i wrote that down on my list right now all right let's take a look you know something very related to home builders is um home construction which is the itb Um, and look at this. I mean, that is great too. I mean, there's no doubt about that. The ITB. Now, little tip here for you. If you want to find out what stocks are in something like this, let's just go to ITB um, ETF. I'm just going to do it with you right now. Go to I just do a, um, a Google search I put in uh, ETF I, I uh, ITB and uh, holding or holdings and it'll just you'll see it up on that um, let's take a look here why isn't this getting bigger it should be getting bigger on me so you can see it better I don't know why it's not Anyway, um, you can look at the uh, total return there. One year, 19%. Three year, 35%. Pretty nice key facts, portfolio character characteristics. You should put, be able to find the holdings here. As of now, where are the holdings? <laughs> I, think my, uh, I think my thing is locked up there. Let's go over here. Top 10 holdings. So DR Horton, Lenore, NVR, Pulte Group, Sherman Williams. Um, and it gives you how much the uh, percentage that they're holding. Lowe's, Home Depot, Toll's Brother, Toll Brother, Top Build, Building stuff. So, yeah, I mean, you could dig down a little di uh, deeper and see these stocks that are that are performing pretty good uh, that are holding, holding us up. Definitely the DHI, the Lenore, and some of the other ones we looked at the Sherman Williams before the Lowe's and the Home Depot we looked at those too Toll Brothers are holding up pretty good top build let's take a look at BLD BLD and then I would go back over here and just start to look at some of these BLD and look at it oh oh I messed that up BLD Wow, uh, that really took off from 205 to 250. Whoa, what a nice pullback. And again, what happened? We got oversold. Got oversold and there was a slight divergence there too. So you can see the slight divergence there. Um, looks pretty good. It's not uh, something I want to chase at this point, but it just shows you. And again, we don't have to chase anything. Eventually, you're always going to have a setup. And the setups, I'm going to find them, and we're going to get the alerts on them. 
Um, let's take a look at the IBB, the biotech index, um, the ETF. Some of these have not started to rally yet, and they're not oversold yet. The last time the IBB got down here, it did have a nice little bounce, and the time before that, it had a nice little bounce. The time before that, it had a nice little bounce. But look at the direction now. It's down. It's hard hard to uh, jump into on that. You know, it's just very hard to do that. Now, there's a lot of other ones. I think we went over most of them. Home construction, energy, oil service, sector, OIH. Again, I don't like to trade that, but we will look at it anyway. That's a... A big one, and again, side, sideways, chopola, chop salad here, and the directional move is down. So, the, uh, the beautiful divergence back here, and that's what we have to wait for. We have to wait for the divergences. The divergences are going to be on our HPS watch list. When you get one, you probably should take it. Uh, you know, great for the IRA also. Something that you don't have to manage. Just let it let it work for you. Unless, of course, the war, you know, World War III breaks out and then all bets are off the table. But these are going to be the higher probability zones that we get you, get you uh, notified of. Two. One thing I'm missing here is my... Um, I didn't see the, uh, the defense. Like, let's take a look. Here we have Jets, the global ETF, foreign planes. Airlines. Um, that had a nice little pop. Boeing. Nice pullback on Boeing here. Uh, beautiful pullback on Boeing, actually. And we're just getting oversold on the 9.3 on Boeing. But we went through those, and from those, the home builders looking great. But the majority of them, I would say 80% of them, it's just very choppy and, and very, um, you know, indecisive at this point. It's not always going to be like that. But like I said earlier, there will be weeks when things are uh, kind of in a gray area and not really that black and white. The Boeing here has pulled back some off the highs. It's okay, 205. Here's the weekly on Boeing, which is a big weekly turnover. Boeing's a good, good name, though. Hope Boeing doesn't get uh, blamed for the, you know, who knows? They find out that Boeing made the uh, the submarine. I think NASA made the hull for the submarine. I'm sorry to hear that sad news this week. Um, <clears throat> we'll look at one more ETF. Um, we'll take a look at the XTL, the telecom. Let's take a look. That's um, again, the ETF might not be something you get into, but the, it overall gives us a feel of what the underlying stocks are doing. And again, you can see the trend here, suffering a little stock rot on this. And again, pointing down, not quite oversold yet, no divergences. I would give these these time to set up, maybe get a bounce and a retest of the lows, and then put you know, those divergences. Now, there's individual stocks that we love to go to. The net, I love the net here. Um, we've been in it, you know, and it's still based out really nice. So some of these stocks are interesting down here that they haven't really continued to move, you know, the pullbacks here, we continue to watch them, but again, over getting oversold, not quite yet there, but I think we got to stick around these tech stocks that are, that are attracting good money, that are good quality names that are making money. And uh, you just have to get that pullback in them. And right now we're kind of in limbo as we are pulling back. They we're getting close though. We're getting close on a lot of these. And now you see the reaction on net, each time it gets oversold, it does bounce. So there is some opportunities here in net when it does come in. Um, Shopify is another one I haven't looked at in a while. And that since it gapped up, and that's actually a nice pullback to the 20, starting to pull back. Um, Tesla, a lot of people like the Tesla, TSLA. Uh, you, know, you can't go against Tesla. You can't, you know, even though it's not a buy right here, it's starting to roll over too. So that's our ETS. Right now, the home builders actually look the best. Um, 
and there were some other interesting ones you could review the uh, the video if you want to go back and look at those now let's talk about our 10 top 10 stocks here going forward um, and stocks that are setting up good AAPL I mean you're gonna know a lot of these stocks I mean, it's, it's obvious that Apple has to lead and looks great here Apple breaking out the highs I think Apple gets to two hundred dollars and um, any way you want to hold on to this Apple is the play second ISRG you know I love this stock I think it's an AI stock also uh, we loved it on the last pullback here it's only been moving up it broke out here at the 320 level got all the way up to 330 now it's pulled back four day pullback it looks fantastic here it looks fantastic probably one of the best bets going into next week write it down you heard me say it ISRG ISRG best bet now, a lot of people out there are like oh these stocks are too expensive I'm telling you what the best bet of uh, the odds of moving higher. I don't know some some brokers now let you buy partial shares. We're talking percentage gains here. You know these stocks here move good. You know uh, you're going to get more consistent moves in these. Let me see if I could actually get a. That, that was a 10% move off of that last move. That's not bad off that last oversold level. I don't care. You give me 10% in any stock. That's great. Now, this is flagging out of here. This is my best bet going into next week. All right? Best bet going into next week. ISRG. Um, I would just say the, the breakout here, the high, 328.68. We'll put the buy trigger at 329. Mm -hmm. I think 329 gets this thing going back over 330 and 330 brings us to 340 real fast. Real, real fast. All right, that's number two. My number three stock is Costco. Quality name, big, big pennant breakout. New trend here, downward trend has been broken. Had a slight little pullback, holding the 20 period moving average, holding up relative today and looking like it's starting to turn back up here. All right. Um, just uh, like it. Like it a lot. Number three setup on this is Costco. I want to put Meta on the list. I want to bring it as, as a uh, runner up, even though it is making new highs. It continues to look good. Um, I just think it's uh, it's it's a little extended here, but I, I, I Yeah, I'm not gonna put it on there, but I do like it. I've always liked it. You know, I was one of the few that liked the, the, the meta down here <laughs> Just imagine, you know put, put it all in walk away and come back you're up a, a hundred points in a, a few months Number four on the list tractor supply company Look at the look at the trend line here. <clears throat> now the trend line goes all the way down to the lows. We tagged it here in 2022 multiple times, and we kind of flushed through it. And when we talk about a flush through, when we get back above it, when we start to hold it, that is a great sign. You can see this is starting to embed itself to the upside and starting to turn back up. We're kind of squeezing right here on that trend line. Um, just looks good. I like the tractor supply company. A lot here. It ends up on number four on the list. Number four on the list, and it looks. Per, let's take a look at the. Um, again, we looked at the daily. The weekly is probably. Let's take a look at the weekly. Oh, the weekly is perfect. Oh, definitely, definitely. Weekly's on your side. You got a friend in me. That's what the weekly's saying. And what happened back here? Nice grind up here. A little two-week consolidation. Perfect for this stock. I like this car a lot. Carrier Global. Big shout out to Racer. Brought this one to us originally. We liked it off. the. This was definitely a channel play. Each time it came down to the lower trend line, lower trend line, even the pullback here, we liked it. Um, and now it's extended a little extended on the daily and also extended on the weekly weekly is just getting overbought very strong 
stock though i mean this thing came from 14 dollars at 48 this is a growth stock all right it, it looks good it's it's continued to move it's uh it looks good the recent highs are up here at 59 it is a little extended here but for this for this uh for this list this is a longer term list i want to put it there at number five at number five all right interrupt this uh top 10 list here for an important i'm doing some scans while i take a uh, you know when i go through this i'm still scanning out some stocks and stuff and i came across dupont the chemical stock and uh, i just i mean this is this is prime time right here now i don't know if i want to put this on the list it could go on the list it's a great company um it's it's looks man this thing looks perfect here we have a lower trend line established in october then we came back and retested it and then tested it here with a one two three pattern x marks the spot we're back to an x marks the spot on this the gap up and the pull back to the trend line here oversold on the daily the weekly here is uh, kind of the the uh the wild card here because we are kind of failing on the weekly but I just wanted to point this one out because this one probably deserves to be on the HPS watch list with a trigger of, let's see here, a trigger of 80, 6809, 6850, 6850 is a buy trigger on that. All right, 6850. We're going to get a chart on that for you. That means it's a buy on 6850. It's oversold. It's an X marks the spot. It's a trend line retracement. And it's oversold. It's a high probability setup. I'm not going to put it on the main list because of the weekly, but it is uh, definitely looks really good. It looks really, really good. All right, number six on our list is Boston Scientific. Now we've been in this one. We took profits on it. Um, it gapped up. It continues to move higher. It had every reason to pull back in this market. It hasn't. This was a perfect divergence off the lower trend line. Uh, very steep divergence. I just see this thing here continuing to move higher. It is robotics. It is AI. It is everything you want. It's $54. It's not a bad price point here. It's embedded on the stochastics and just starting to get embedded. So, you know, a little weakness today in the markets has its stutter stepping, but overall you got to look at this one as they continued to move higher i mean boston scientific the robotic dogs boston dynamics i mean this is this is metal a medical device uh, maker here i keep on calling this boston i keep on calling this the robot company but boston dynamics is a robot company this is the medical device maker um, I always get those two confused, but again, sorry about this. This is a medical device maker. Boston Dynamics is the robot company, <laughs> but I, I, this is the one I invested in. I don't think you get into Boston Dynamics. I don't think it's public. It, uh, the, um, I think it's owned by Hyundai, believe it or not. It's the parent company of that. Anyway, great, great uh, look at this one coming out of the divergence. Number six, down further on the list. Number seven, J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan just off the highs here. And again, not the highs highs, but this large, large, large cup and a little handle and our second handle. And at 145 really is kind of giving us that breakout zone. So this is a buy above this level, this trend line here. This this is an area that's been tested once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times all the way back here. Again, it's a buy above this. Or do we get oversold? And once we get oversold, then you can start to... Um, then we can start to uh, look at this. Uh, for uh, maybe the possible move up here. There was a little divergence here to the downside, but it came back up. Again, look at the area up here. Once we break out of this, there's a couple other ones here that that uh, are pulling back. Goldman Sachs is also pulling back and just getting oversold too. But I like the J.P. Morgan. 
uh, a little bit better right now. So J JP Morgan making it up here, number seven. Number seven. Now, number eight, you might be surprised with me saying this. This is kind of an outlier. A lot of people don't like this one. They say they're getting lunch eaten by AMD, but I think they're going to turn around and gonna come back strong. Intel, I-N-T-C. Always been a big fan of the Intel uh, company. I remember growing up with it, and we look back at it, where this thing was and where it is now. Um, I think they're going to come back. They're going to come. They're going to make a turnaround here. This was a nice divergence. We like this one here. It got a pop, and now this is a pretty aggressive pullback. And the pullback is a nice pullback to a trend line. It's also getting just about oversold, but as a longer term uh, setup here, this pullback looks really nice. We're going to circle it off here because every time we circle it, it's live and where we like it. Um, so. If, does it pull all the way back down to the uh, $30 level? We're very close to that. Just two points. All right, bringing up the uh, number nine spot is Cloudflare. You know how much I love this one. Um, I started loving this one time I was having trouble with my cert, my um, my router here. and I had to go into the, uh, the configuration on the router, and it was all these things. I asked RPM. I said, what is this? What is all this stuff that says Cloudflare and stuff? And he goes, oh, you know, this is all over the modems and stuff. It's, you know, I forget what he was mentioning to me. And I took an interest in it and I started following it. I said, this, is, this stuff is all over the place. And it was really cheap at the time um, when we got into it. It was down here, uh, I don't know, it was 2020. We, got, we brought this one to your attention when it was really cheap, like $30, $40. It ran up to $210. And it's pulled all the way back down. And it's kind of based around that $40 level. And you can see there is a lot of activity here, a lot of chart charting I did on this. And I still love this stock. And I think it's a great stock to uh, for the longer you know, longer run here. I mean, security, everything that has to do with internet security and protocol. Uh, we're cleaning up the chart a little. You can see there was a kind of an area there. And I want to just clean this up just a little bit more so we get a cleaner view on this. This was the key area back here at 45. Then it moved all the way up to 70. Now it's pulled back a little. And we're almost oversold here. Almost oversold. We're about 28. Yeah, we're almost oversold. Let's take a look at the weekly here. Weekly is a problem. But again, the base is pretty good. And again, this is going to grow. This is going to grow. And this is going to ramp up here. Definitely like this as our number nine spot. Uh, NET again longer term scenario playing out here here's the daily almost oversold how far does it get down do we come back down to the 200 do we uh, get back down to uh, the 50s and that's a, a longer term I don't mind it the base here it looks great it looks like the 71 level is going to break us out in a big way and that probably starts to ramp us back up. So we'll probably do a little bit more deep, a deeper dig on this one, and uh, get a true valuation of it and see what the price should be at. It, it is an expensive stock. The forward PE is 149. All right, and the, there's no even there's no peg re ratio. I mean, it is uh, it is kind of ex extended and a little expensive at this point. But uh, we know a lot of stocks are, you know. <laughs> Tesla's PE, the forward PE is only 52. All right, Tesla's forward PE is only 52. Huh? <clears throat> ISRG is 50. You know, these are ex expensive. <clears throat> And rounding off the, the list here, number 10, and again, don't hate me for this one, is Disney. <clears throat> I like that Bob Iger is back on the, on the helm here on a limited time frame. He has, he has something to prove. Um, we're back down to a major, major support level here. And even if we moved a little lower, I mean, we're getting pretty, pretty uh, cheap on this right now. Where this thing came from, yeah, Disney has their issues and stuff. But they are a mega company, and they're going through their issues and stuff. 
Um, but they're oversold now. They're oversold on the daily and the weekly. And the weekly could be setting up as a weekly divergence. Now, uh, again, do we break down? Is there any bad news on Disney? Or there's going to be good news. I think there's going to be some kind of good news that's going to pop it uh, out of this level. Uh, Disney is definitely worth a look at down here. It, bring, it, catch, it gets on the list at number 10. All right. Number 10 here, Disney. And don't give me all this, you know, stuff that they, you know, they're, they're, they're a woke company and you don't like them before. We're talking a company that knows how to make money. Uh, it's just a matter of time before they get this, you know, get their act together. Um, something, will, something will happen with Disney. It's down number 10 on the list. So, again, it, it, it squeaked in there. And there might be some other ones here that will adjust this. We'll make this... Uh, an ongoing thing in the forum or top 10 and we'll adjust it it will be our DTR top 10 like the IBD 50 IB internet uh, yeah IBD 50 um, so it squeaks in there it squeaks in there on that best bet ISRG and uh, that's number two anyway but that's my best bet going into next week. And again, I apologize. You want a cheap one? We got into something kind of crazy today. I'll leave you with this. Um, there is some other good stocks here. I mean, I didn't even mention some that were runner-up, General Dynamics. A nice runner-up here on the uh, the weekly, starting to turn back up on the weekly. Could easily made the list. Nice downward ch uh, channel. Weekly starting to move up. Probably could have easily made, I'd put, put that would probably number 11. The daily here, uh, the only reason I didn't, because the daily was turning over kind of aggressively. But you know what? The channel's there. Channel's there. The nice uh, pullbacks there. The divergence back here was key. Aerospace and defense, key. You might look at this, say, this is a bigger head and shoulders pattern that's playing out with the left shoulder and the neckline. And we kind of broke down, and we're kind of right on that neckline again. Um, but again, just mentioned a few of those. Now, as uh, flatline poppers go, and I always update these as we continue. I didn't mention the AbV. Um, they lost their key drug, but I, I do like the level down here on AbV. I think it's getting very close to getting that bounce. We'll watch it closer. It did turn back over here. It is kind of a negative setup. It had a little rally today. Ran it at 139 is the key level. We had to get through 139. 139 starts a rally in this on AV. So watch the AV on the 139 level. Um, so IronNet. This is a cheap penny stock. Never put it on here. I ended up buying IronNet. Uh, um, you know, we, we actually bought it at 15 cents. I sold it at 30 cents and sold the rest today at around 25 or 26 cents. Uh, and then it pulled, you know, then someone said, hey, how do I like the warrants on I IRNT? Now, warrants are just a different way of, to, like, options. They give the option to buy the stock at, at a price down the road. And this, the options go out to 2026. This is a pure gamble. A pure gamble. Um, pure, pure gamble. But the, the, uh, the, for whatever reason, if it works out, I'm not even telling you to get into it. I'm just kind of updating you on some things that we did today. It's trading around two cents. It got into a, a, a penny and seven tenths. <laughs> one point, point zero one. What, what did I get in that? Right, one point zero, point zero one seven. Um, picked up seven thousand shares of it. it. Cost a hundred and thirty dollars. It was it was nothing, and. Uh, uh, just let you know, it's just a, uh, a gamble here. We've seen s these SPAC stocks get a bounce. There's little rumors out there. They're trying to take this one private. I don't know uh, even what would happen with the warrants. I just let you know for a transparency reason that I got into this one today. But we also, again, um, take a look at the, uh, let me get some, let me get this set up here. Hold on. Uh, 
Um, let's see here. We sold that. We sold our spy today. Calls. All right. So we picked up Disney this week, and we picked up a little bit more. Well, we picked up some PayPal. P Y P L. Um, I think we discussed all, all these. Let's see what else. Um, just want to make sure I'm not f missing anything too important. You can always reach me at ironaction at yahoo.com. Ironaction at yahoo.com. If you have any questions, you have any issues with the coupon for the sale or anything like that. Um, if you want to try, if you have to, um, if you want to take advantage of the sale, but you, you want to just put down a half payment, we could set you up for that also. So, fo all right. Um, so, I, I'm still holding that Goodyear tires. We bought the CVS recently on the gap down. You know, some this gap down continues to kind of move back up. This typically kind of gets a little pop back up. I mean, we get a little bit more, we get a little profit in this. I'm going to take it off. I'm not my favorite, but I like opportunities like the gap down. There was a tremendous opportunity in, in UNH that I ended up missing, and that was. I knew I missed it when I was watching it. You know, I, I was here and I was like, man, this looked, you know, there was just a lot of, uh, they were saying something about there was too many um, surgeries happening. Elect, you know, just surgeries didn't need to happen. It was going to affect their bottom line. And they gapped down and it hit all these uh, healthcare insurance type of stocks. And and that was just an opportunity, out of, you know, and I, I just didn't pull the trigger, and now look at it. It's pulled all the way back. So we're always looking for those. I'm not going to miss the next opportunity in that one. Um, let's see what else. Have the sold the clips. The CLF here. Did you like that CLF? Sometimes we get into these, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> we got in down here off of the trend line, and we moved all the way up here. <clears throat> and look at that it, it came right up to our trend line and we took profits right into that trend line it moved a little bit further now it's pulled back and now it's starting to get oversold so again any of these stocks that had kind of get oversold that we recently been in you know if it comes back down to this level might be interested in it again Harley Davidson was another one HOG we don't mention that too um, off the lower trend line so we're waiting for, waiting for the new ones to set up I hope you enjoyed this week's watch list. I hope you uh, enjoyed the, some of the commentary. And um, we're going to update. I have something new for us next week. I, you know, I've been. It's going to be dealing with the futures, and it's also going to be dealing with people who are trying to trade futures and they want to um, qualify on some of these uh, prop trading accounts. I have a, a segment coming up on that to help you do that. Don't do anything yet. I want to show you how to do it step by step with a great starting point and um, a special st stream that's only going to be taking the quad rotation divergences. It's going to be fantastic. I'm really, really excited about it. It's going to be only members only. It's going to be, <laughs> might be embedded on the dashboard, might be a separate link altogether. It's going to be a separate channel, but. Um, Members will have access to that. That, that, that and we won't be oh, those. The only ones are going to have access to it, and members. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of a hint towards that, uh, where we're going to be heading with that. And I'm setting that up, uh, you know, this weekend. Uh, hopefully, I'll have it running by Monday, Tuesday to test them, just getting everything up, and then we'll make the uh, we'll make the grand announcement on that going into next week. But take advantage if you're not a a member, yeah, the day trading radio, a lot of you are. But uh, this is, again, going out to some non-members, too, because we do a special special update there. Take advantage of some of the sales that we're doing. I think you uh, you can't go wrong with that, especially the um, summer lifetime sale right now. Use the coupon code A111. All right, coupon code A111, and get half price off of that lifetime, which gives you the bots, gives you everything at Day Trading Radio. Or if you want to go with the, uh, with the yearly, it's a great deal too. You get uh, similar stuff, except you don't get the Rockbot codes uh, that run on your own machine and stuff. So head over to Day Trading Radio for any information you need. It's 
Glad to be here with you. If you have any questions, email me at ironaction at yahoo.com. Ironaction, I-R-O-N-A-C-T-I-O-N at yahoo.com. Have a great weekend. Stay healthy. Have fun. See you Monday.